societies of equals yield only average individuals. Without adversity, the strong grow dull. Without competition, the weak win more ground than they should. What follows is a regression to the mean for all participants, and then a limited society begins to rot. forest you see around me is a managed forest. Uh, most of the trees here were planted by people and these types of forests are often divided up into square sections of trees of about the same age. Uh, these kind of trees are deliberately placed at somewhat equal distances from one another because that way each tree may be sure to take up about the same amount of resources from the soil and every tree will also collect about the same amount of sunlight as every other tree. So this kind of setup cancels out competition. It's the idea of an egalitarian society applied to forestry and as a result each tree ends up growing a trunk of about the same width and the same height as everyone else's. There's a downside. Uh, trees that develop in such equalized forests tend to yield a lower quality of wood. The wood of these trees is softer, less suitable for construction and by far not as durable. Without the necessary challenges, there's simply no need to strengthen one's core. There's no need to achieve one's highest potential if the conditions are gentle. And I'm, of course, speaking about people now. Equality means to reduce individual or group conflict so that weaker specimens may receive nearly the same chances of success as more vigorous ones. So by contrast, in a natural unspoiled forest, there is a fiercer struggle for resources. There, trees grow at uneven distances from one another, at different age cohorts. Uh, they do so on uneven grounds, and so they have to fight each other more vigorously to win access to nutrients from the soil and to the sunlight from above. Of course, I know trees also work together, just like people do. I'm not saying trees exist as radical individuals, each pursuing their rational self-interest. That's Jordan Peterson. Trees don't do that, and neither should we. Trees may, for example, under the soil, uh, intertwine their roots to create a network for distributing resources to one another, just like a society. But allowing for some level of healthy struggle between individuals and groups also helps root out less vigorous elements to the benefit of the whole. If making forests more equal makes them weaker, then why do foresters of the world around prefer planting them? Well, this has something to do with the economics of felling trees. If trees each have about the same height and the same width, it becomes a lot easier for sawmills to cut them into planks. You see, the economic benefit of standardizing all trees outweighs the cost of their lower quality. That is, of course, until you plan to build a bridge. The same wisdom applies to people. Uh, the socialist equality cult wants to standardize people so that they too can be more easily exploited economically. And as people's individual potentials become less diverse, as societies minimize conflict, a complacent people becomes more predictable and so more manageable. Uh, the financial benefits of making people equal tend to outweigh the loss of their overall vigor. But why does any of this matter? Why does it matter to abandon, to abandon equality in favor of struggle? Well, a society of equals limits the potential of the vigorous to the abilities of the incompetent. So it shackles the strong to the needs of the weak. Such societies soon arrive at a state of arrested development. You can either have equality or progress, but you can't have both. The ideal of equality wasn't always the norm. There were times when men, less afraid of public opinion, weren't scared to do the necessary evil. So if we go back a thousand years, so sometime during the 10th century or the 9th century, a famine hit Iceland. It's recorded in one of these sagas. So when people began starving in large numbers, the strongest Viking men gathered at their Althing. This was the world's first parliament. They discussed the matter at hand and decided that the best thing to do was to get on their horses, go around the island and kill the weak, the sick and the elderly. By ridding their island of those very people most likely to die of the famine anyway, these men helped preserve a more vigorous stock. We would do well then like the old Vikings, to abandon the notion of equality altogether. If we are prepared to carry the responsibility for our future, then we are ready to push back against international socialism.